Hey, Visionary, if you're a small business owner or you have your own personal branks, you want to get a job, you want to get clients, whatever the name of the game is, you got to have a website. And you got to make sure the website has a, this magical thing called SEO, which I'll explain. Most people know it, but I'll explain what it is. So that when people Google you or Bing you or whatever search engine they're going to be using in the future, that you show up. And the secret of that is SEO. That's search engine optimization, which basically means the search engines, when they go to your website, all the text and all the images and all the videos and everything about it is telling the search engine what your site is about. So if I'm Mike, the dog trainer, which if you've ever met my little dog Hopper, you know, I'm not a dog trainer, but if I'm Mike, the dog trainer, and I don't have the words dog trainer or teach your pet how to sit or you know, anything like that on my website, Google's not going to have any freaking clue what my site's about. And therefore, when people search how to get my dog to sit, or in my case, how to get my dog to stop barking at every other dog, then my site is not going to show up in search results. That's a problem. Now, there's some businesses out there. All they do is SEO, like in terms of their marketing, it's just SEO based. And, the, and be, because that's a steady thing to do, right? It takes years to really get traction with that. But they get so much traffic that they're, you know, million dollar companies just from SEO. So SEO can be super, super powerful. It's also very slow and labor intensive. So just FYI. So I'm not, I'm not here in this video to show you how to do SEO because I am by no means an SEO expert. But I, I do want you to be mindful of being clear on who you serve, what problem or transformation you deliver for your clients, and what your main keywords are around those problems or you or your brand. So I'm Mike L. Murphy, by the way. So my personal site is MikeLMurphy.com. And in my SEO description of it, the keywords and the meta descriptions, which I'll go over in a minute, I make sure that my name, Mike L. Murphy, and all the wacky spellings of that are in there. So when somebody Googles me, my site shows up. Really, really important that you do this stuff. It's not rocket science, but it's got to be done. And a lot of people just skip it. So let me go over the overviews of SEO fundamentals. All right, let me jump over to my whiteboard of doom and show you some SEO principles. So imagine this is a page, as wonky as I'm drawing it. This is a page, and let's say it's a, it's a blank page. Well, here's Google, and Google's like, what the heck is this page about? Doesn't know, what could it be? So what we wanna do is figure out first, what is our site about? What is the topic category about our site? So let's just assume that uh, I'm Mike the web builder, which, is one thing I do, but it's it's by no means just all my business is. But let's just keep it simple and say, I help people, I build websites for businesses. Just keep it simple. So knowing that, I'd want to figure out what are my keywords? Site, website, build a website, website agency, done for you website, easy website, right? There's going to be a lot of them. So once I know what those keywords are, then I want to start creating content on my homepage that has those keywords. So Google sees it and goes, oh, I know exactly what that site's about. And also, aside from Google, which is great, we love Google, the user, the person, the client, the potential client, we want them to very easily come to the site and say, oh, this is about website builds, hooray. So a couple of things that we wanna have is we wanna have the, the keyword. Now the keyword is gonna be the thing that people search for. So for most businesses, the keyword is either going to be your brand name, your name, and most of my clients, I recommend that you are your brand. So your brand name is you, right? Think about Oprah or Tony Robbins. The brand is them, just FYI. And then, so we got the brand name or your name, but then we also have the topic name. So those are keywords. Now, sometimes it's just a word like website or more, more realistically, it's a keyword phrase like how to build a website or top website designers in Detroit or whatever it's going to be. So we want to make sure that we have the keywords baked into our site based off what people are searching for. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So the site itself should have a keyword in it, right? So if you go to my website, it's mikeelmurphy.com. That's my, that's my name. That's my keyword. So the URL itself has the keyword in it. Now, the next thing we want to do is somewhere near the top of the site, we want to have your keyword or keyword phrase once again. So if this is website builds, maybe it's Michael Murphy website builds. So the website would be michaelmurphy.com, but here on the homepage, I would say, we build your website fast and easy, right? Because I know that website, fast, easy, or whatever the keywords are. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. 
I know that I'm hitting that right away. So Google is coming to the site and they're going to read it like a normal person. They're going to start, start at the top and go down. So right away they're like, oh, that's a keyword, website builds. Oh, easy, affordable, whatever the case is. They're going to start checking it out. And then as they go lower on the page, I want to make sure that all those other keywords are snuck in and into the text, that I've baked them in strategically to the text. Now you'll go, I'll just do a quick aside. Sometimes you'll go to a website on the bottom, there's like a list of all these words, right? It's just like the, the bottom navigation bar is like a million, <laughs> a million links. What they're doing is they're keyword stuffing. They're, they're having all the most important keywords that they know is getting them traffic and sales. They're stacking it on the bottom of the, of the site, linking that usually over to a content piece. So let's say I have a keyword on the bottom, build, build a website, right? I would hyperlink that to a blog article that would be called build your website. And I would make sure that that blog article is ranking for that particular keyword. So now when Google comes to the site, they're like, oh my gosh, this site's definitely about keywords or about, about website builds, yippee. And it starts crawling through and seeing that, that I've, got, I've got keywords hyperlinked to articles about that content. And that's when Google's like, yes, you've done your job, right? So that's how we really make Google happy or Bing or whatever search engine happy by making sure that the keywords we have on our site are relevant. And then in some instances, especially if you're gonna do SEO, um, you know, if you're gonna invest in SEO work for, for your business, then you're gonna have people writing articles and, and doing this, this heavy linking. But that aside, you know, that's pretty advanced stuff. That aside, let me just go back to the fundamentals of SEO. So you're gonna to wanna to have your keywords sprinkled in, on, in in certain spots. And you're also gonna to wanna to have images. So let's say it's an image of, let's say this is my site, I have an image of me. I don't want that image to be like x9421.image, right? Whatever the camera created. I wanna rename that and call it Michael Murphy smiling or Michael Murphy headshot. Because Google, they can see, that's called metadata by the way. The name of the image is metadata. So Google is gonna go and see that image. And if it's some wacky thing or it's, you know, it's, called something completely different, right? Uh, crayons dot, dot JPEG or whatever. Google's gonna be confused like, wait, I thought this site's about websites and this image is called crayons? What's going on? So it's very, very important that you control the narrative with Google uh, in terms of your, your SEO fundamentals so that every element has been planned out. Now that's just the surface level stuff. There's also a thing called metadata. So let me jump into my, my uh, website builder. Let me go to the desktop version. Okay, so this is a mock-up website page. It's really ugly, by the way. But if I go up to settings, by the way, if you love my website builder, talk to me. Uh, we, we, you can, you can, uh, we, got, we got a great website builder, low cost, great, super easy to use. And it comes with coaching so we can show you how to, how to fill your site out and, and grow your business. But anyhow, I digress. So if I go over here and I go to SEO metadata, there's that, there's that word SEO. You can see there's things like the title, description, keywords, author, and social images. So let me just do this real quick. Let me just say, we build you a great site. I would actually do website. And then here I'd be like, um, Mike L. Murphy, I'm gonna just type it really fast, builds your small business or personal brand a beautiful website. So I'd have that keyword there, right? I have my, my, my main name or my brand name there and then my keyword there. Keyword? Keyword. Also the URL of the site would be like Mike Murphy website build or something like that dot com. Now keywords, I would again, I would put Mike L. Murphy and then sometimes it's got the period in it, right? Mike L. Mike L. Murphy and sometimes people spell it wrong like, like Michael L. Murphy, right? I'd put every possible variation of what people might be searching for. And then I also would put website, website builds, site builder, site build agency. You get the idea. This is the secret sauce so that Google crawls your site, sees what's on page, and then they look at their metadata, which is this stuff here, and it's congruent. Right? Hey, this site's about website builds. Wow, you know, Google's like, yay, finally somebody gets it. Because most people build crappy sites, they don't give SEO, and Google just like, I don't know what this site's about, I'm not gonna recommend it. So author, again, I would just put my name there. Let me add the, the Y. And then I could upload an image, and I'm, I'm not gonna do all that. But you can see here in the site preview, if I go to Google, assuming this awful page was live, if I go to Google and I search uh, Mike Murphy website build, whatever, then 
the, the website would show up and this would be the preview. So you can see, we build you a great site. That's the title of the page. You can see the URL, that would be the URL of the site. You can see the description, that's right here. So it's really important that you have this SEO data because again, it shows Google what you're doing, but somebody's searching for you, now we can sell them with the description. So if I was actually gonna do this, I would have something like need an affordable and amazing website that converts. If you're ready to stack clients on and increase your revenue, let's talk, click here, right? So I'd have something like that that's very short, very sweet, has a simple call to action, has the keywords that I know people are gonna be looking for, and that would be my description. So that description basically serves as a little mini ad that sells someone on the click so they can go over to the website and learn more about you and your business. Pretty straightforward. So that's the importance of SEO. Now, I'm gonna show you this. This is the Google Keyword Planner. I'll put this link in the description. So let me go over to Google Geek Keyword Planner. This is a free tool. There are paid tools. I have a few paid tools, but this one's gonna be fine for you. You do need to get a Google account, and then once you have a Google account, you wanna get a Google ad account. You can Google how to do that. I'm not gonna make a long video about that. But let's say I wanna go and discover new keywords. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna write um, website, build agency for, I'll just do personal brand. And let's see what shows up. Now I can just put the keyword or the keyword phrase in there. I can select what country, or I can actually put a, a URL. So if I have a competitor's website and I wanna see what keywords are working for them, I could do that. So just for sake of purposes, I'm gonna do get results. Let me actually open this up. Okay, so it's not giving me any results. Let me let me put another website. Let me do website search. Okay, so it's gonna be different keyword ideas. So you can see here, the keyword website has average monthly searches of 300,000. But don't get too excited. As Mike, the website builder, I'm not like, wow, there's 300,000 people looking for my services. No, that might be somebody just saying, hey, what's the... You know, you know how to how do I um, log into a website or, or tell me about websites? Right, it could be super vague and broad. So in general, the shorter the keyword, right? If it's just one keyword, super broad like that, which a lot of people are searching for, that's not going to be targeted for your business. But if I go down lower, you can see website builder. That's ninety thousand people. I wouldn't get too excited about that either because that might be somebody looking for a free website building tool, not necessarily a, a agency level service. So you're gonna to wanna to go through these and really look at this stuff. Let me just go to uh, here. Okay, so now I can start to get a better understanding of things and I can look for, so if I was gonna be building my website out, I might be like, free website templates, 6,000 people, 6,600 people search for free website templates. Well, guess what? If they're looking for the word free, they're, it's not buyer intent. So I would not I would not build content around free, the word free, because those people, they're not, they're not gonna buy. So let me find someone. Web, where, uh, free, you know, web design company. Okay, 14,000 people are searching for web design company. That's good to know. Now that might also be super broad. That might be a big corporate company or an e-com company that wants some crazy Shopify store. Not something that I would do. So I want. I would probably keep looking more. Right. Web development company, four thousand people. Etsy website. Okay, that's good. So if I was gonna, you know, if it was like Etsy, a website agency or Etsy website builder, then that would be super specific. Now another thing you can do. This is pretty cool is if I go over to competition, I'm gonna rank the keywords by high competition. I'm just gonna re restructure this, okay. So now I can see Etsy official website, that's people searching for Etsy, so that's not people looking for a website build, but you can see 8,000 searches a month for that, and it's got high competition, so when somebody searches for Etsy website, people are paying for ads for that traffic. So if someone's looking for Etsy, they're looking for crafts and stuff. So if I was Mike the Craftsman and I was selling, I don't know, uh, uh, cup holders or whatever people sell on Etsy, then I would probably want to run ads knowing I could get my ad if I had, you know, if I was willing to spend the money, I could get my ad. Well, for here you can go 66 cents is the top of the page bid. So if I was willing to spend 66 cents, I can make sure that somebody's searching for Etsy official website, they'd see my ad about my cup holder. Now, 
I'm not going to do that, but that would be an example of that. So let, let me let me just find a, a relevant one. So these are all free. Um, okay, best website builder for small business. That is getting a $42 bid. So for if I go to Google and I search for best website builder for small business, companies are paying $42 to be placed at the top of the Google search results because that keyword is making them money. So that that traffic is buyer intent traffic, meaning advertisers are gonna pay for it. So that's a little secret is you can go into Google AdWords uh, Keyword Planner and you can sort this by high bid rate. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna search that, right? So if we do that, website developer near me, $45 people are spending for that. Best website builder for small business, $42. Google web hosting, not really relevant. Right, website development company, people are paying 36 bucks. So if I was gonna go and start my company just doing website build and I was gonna plant the flag and say, I'm Mike the website builder, then those keywords would be the keywords I would wanna bake into my website so that I could get some free traffic coming to my site and hopefully get some clients. Hopefully that makes sense too, right? Now again, with SEO, it can get you can go really deep in it, and there's there's companies out there that's all they do is you can hire them and they just do web they just do SEO consistently for your business. It, it, it's a low it's a it's a slow um, burn for that. It's not immediate. Like if you run ads, you immediately get traffic and people convert or not. SEO takes a long time. So usually seasoned companies that have a big budget, they're gonna will they're they're willing to invest in SEO over the long game because they know it's going to pay off, especially if, you know, if I'm going to spend 45 bucks just to get somebody to see this, you know, see my ad and click over, doesn't even mean they're going to, they're going to buy my stuff. It's just, I just paid $45 to get the view. Then if I could just invest in SEO and the numbers panned out, then SEO organic searches, because uh, I did SEO work on my site is probably going to be a better long play than spending the ad money. So, all right, so let's, let me just unpack this. Meta tags, we talked about that. That's gonna be if I go to your site and you go to the metadata section, meta tags, title is the actual title of your page. In this case, the homepage of your site or a blog post of your site. So that's gonna be the title tag. You wanna make sure you have the keyword in that. And then finally, we have the header tags, which again, is this stuff. So that's that's currently an H1, I'll make it an H6 so you can see, right? So make sure your keywords or your keyword phrases are placed in all of those spots so that Google is happy. Now let's talk about URL structure. Uh, we don't want to have a website URL that's like um, mike-murphy.com. We don't want dashes or anything like that. Typically, we, we want to have a .com. We don't want a .org or a .dot anything else like that. Uh, the exception is if you if you have a software company, you might get like a .dot io, or if you're doing artificial intelligence, you might get a .dot ai. Those seem to be kind of accepted but, uh, these days. But if you're just going to have a normal website, please get the .com. Everything else is bunk. It's not going to. It's going to make you look kind of trashy. Okay. And then finally, let's talk about internal and external linking. I kind of mentioned this before, but let's say website best website builder. Or let's say website builder. I I would then if I knew that that keyword was going to rank, I would go and I make a blog post on my site. And the title of that might be best website builder for small business. So I might have a blog post specifically with this title here. And then I'd be able to link this website builder. I could go and link it to that actual blog post. So Google comes to my site and they see that I'm internally linking. I'm finding, I'm hyperlinking keywords to other pages, content pages on my site. And I'm, I'm again, I'm painting the picture to Google my site is about this topic category or topic categories. I was going to go deeper in that. I'm not, there's a thing called content silos. I'll, I'll make another video about that another day. So that's how that's going to work. That's internal links. The other thing we can do is external links. So another thing Google likes is if all of your, if you don't link out to authority sites, they kind of ding you. So I might build a link out. Like if I, I got this video up about, let's say I make a YouTube video called best website builder. YouTube is an authority site. So I could link, I could hyperlink this over to my video on YouTube about best website builder. And now Google is thinking, wow, this website, not only is it internally linking, it's also linking out, meaning they're not, um, they're, sh they're sharing the love, right? They're, 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 they're directing people to relevant content, not exclusively on their site. So that, that tells them that you're a legit company. Cause if I was, you know, just 
a greedy person, I would, I would say, I don't want people leaving my site, right? So you want to every so often link out to an authority site. That's things like Wikipedia, uh, government sites, um, big, big, big sites, you know, social media sites, like trusted authority sites like that. When you link out to that, that, that tells Google, like, you know, I'm really thinking about my audience and giving them a great experience. So that's very, very important. Okay. Let me go back to this. All right. Uh, let's lastly talk about creating high quality, relevant content. That's a whole topic for another day, but essentially you probably know this. Don't put junk out there. Try to have some value in your content. Like hopefully this video, you you know, you learned something and, it, and you found it valuable. It's really important that content, that your content is clear and concise and your content should always be about your topics that your topic area and more specifically the process you help your clients to get the result they want. So I call it the now to wow. So if Mike, let's say I'm Mike, the weight loss coach. Now my clients are overweight. They have no energy. They're depressed. And the wow is they want to be slim and trim, feeling confident, feeling sexy, getting their energy back, yada, yada, yada. So once I can define now to wow, I can then create a process that's going to help them go from now to wow in a specific time frame. That's what I called your extraordinary process. So when I work with my clients, we figure out what that process is. And then the process or the topics in that process are what's going to tell you, is going to clue you in on what kind of content you should create. More than that, it even clues you on what kind of offers to put. So having a process is really awesome. So it's really, really important that you think about this stuff and you're not just randomly making content, but rather you're intentionally making content, which is speaking to the problems your audience has educating them on how they can solve that problem. And then it frames up your offer as the fast and quick solution, right? Cause they, you know, if you do your job, right, you give them everything and they're like, Oh, I'm clear. I can go do this on my own, but Whoa, I'd rather pay someone to do it. Right. I, I can probably figure out how to change the oil in my car, but boy, I'll pay 35 bucks to have the guy down the street do it. Cause I don't, I don't you know, it's not the best use of my time. So most of your clients are gonna probably have that mindset for whatever your niche of uh, business is. Okay. Hot tip, use free tools like Google's people ask feature to find popular questions. Let me just show you that real quick. Let me go to a Google search. I'll just type Google. Okay. So let's say I want to know how to build a web site. Now look at this. It's showing me intent all the millions of people that are typing stuff into google daily google's smart so it's going to show me it's going to auto complete that phrase and when it auto completes the phrase i can start to get an idea of what keyword phrases people are, are using so how to build a web scraper i might that might be a business idea like wow if i can make a training course on how to build a web scraper i could take how to build a web scraper throw it into google adword planner and see like oh that gets ten thousand hits a month. And then I would go and search and go, wow, no one's got a product to solve that problem. Bingo. The entrepreneur in me is fired up, but I digress. So I'm just going to do how to build a website. Now it's going to take me to search results. And this is what I really wanted to show you. See this people always ask also ask. So how can I build my own website? How much does it cost to build a website? Can I create a website for free? Is it free? Right. Watch this. If I open one and I open one and I open one and I, I can keep opening every time I open, it gives me more. So if I want to go and create content, all I got to do is type in the main thing, how to build a website. And between the autocomplete and between people always ask, I have all the content ideas I could ever need at my disposal. And I also know what keyword phrases I should bake into my website and into my content so I can make Google happy. Are you seeing the power of this? It's pretty cool stuff. Okay. So on that note, if you want to know more about me and the visionary planner and how we can help take your passion and expertise and turn it into a profitable and successful brand that makes an impact for people, then somewhere around here, wherever the text is, I'll put a link so you can book a call with me and my team and learn more about all the different products and services we have. Cause I believe that life is short. And if you have this dream in your heart to go out there and start your own business or expand your business, then nothing should hold you back from that. So that's why I'm here to help you. So Find that link, book a call, or check out my site, michaelmurphy.com, or don't, don't do it. I didn't you know. Do what you need to do. All right. But anyhow, I had a great time making this video. So uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.